the second question actually now is is that or we're not thinking we're on the second question, but this next question is these times have been seriously questioning our economies. How do you envision the brightest future for humanity in terms of economic structure? What will that look like? So I can add to this. So I just did a live stream last night on cryptocurrency, a crypto expert on the channel. And we were talking a whole lot about how um, the U.S., just to make it short, the U.S. just created their own digital currency. It's just so much um, going on with that. And I would encourage others to, like, you know, just diversify your money and to really look and consider uh, a whole nother alternative where you can become your own bank. You know what I mean? Where you can do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do in this economy. And as times are changing, you have to change with it. You know what I mean? And so, but be, be structured on a foundation with it. Don't go put all your, you know, your, your savings and everything into something and you don't even know what you're doing with it. Study it, figure it out, and, um, and just do your research on it. You know, but you're guided. You have, you know, all the resources that you need. You know, there's so many things also on, on YouTube that are free. There are people who just give out so much free knowledge and information. And even uh, what this brother is doing with uh, WealthyBot, the, the crypto stuff and ambassadors training, all that information. And I look at that stuff and really hone in on that stuff and, and study this, you know. So, you know, that's, that's what I got to say on that. This, it's not a time to be really afraid about it, but really capitalize on that and also capitalize on yourself. You are the money. You are, you, you're everything. So you can make a living for yourself, you know, and, and, and come into a, a term where you don't have to worry about if the economy, if the economy is shaky, are you shaky? Are you unstable? That's the conversation that needs to be had. So I just want to um, say, say that and give my two cents on that. That's beautiful. And, and also remembering the key principles to, the financial aspects of how our energy exists, I f believe that we're actually phasing out a huge way of how we've been dealing with our currency with, it's an aspect of let me get this money and hold it somewhere and secure myself with it. And this is like been going on for thousands of years. And I think that that's actually at the core of where the energy wants to go now and what it will really create um, how it, wealth would be really created in these new times of ether that we're actually in. And it would be predominantly about also seeing that when you're getting, let's say, finances in, that you're investing those finances in things that are actually going to help other people. This is like the biggest mysterious aspect. It generally always goes in one direction. Am I, am I making more money? Have I made a good investment? Am I accruing more money? And then there's never really a consideration of, Am I also taking this money and planting seeds or actually investing in others growth and uh, in the benefit of uh, creating something that's going to benefit others from this money? Because when you do that, you actually lock into really the mysteries of big businesses. Like they know that they have WhatsApp for free because there's a lot of people that are going to be there because everybody wants something for free. And then when they have a lot of people there, then it's actually the amount of people that actually equates to money. That's what we saw in cryptocurrency that when like Tron was giving out free cryptocurrency and they had all the Indians there, they had all the people in the unbanked areas as a part of their cryptocurrency. They once the chart started really turning up, they went all the way to the moon and many others that were with them went that were also financially challenged. And that all started from the concept of that money is actually not real. It's numbers are really the people that are involved. And to shift your mind, like entrepreneurs will all have a hard time doing this because it's an entrepreneur that has been working on a capitalistic framework. And it's very difficult to shift one's mind into giving versus receiving and actually being able to dispense the, what you're getting as far as your current, as far as in, in, in investing yourself. That's another thing that we can often invest in others' ideas, especially if we do have some financial aspects to ourselves, some currency that's been built up. And then we'll be looking for ideas or things that we can invest in. Invest in yourself. Know the time that we're actually living in right now. You see how everything is coming on outlet that's being open right now. As Paige said, diversify, like get out there a little bit more. That's going to help you. And you can now go international 
with these kind of banking structures. Also with the, the digital dollar, it's kind of clear too, because you know, being in cryptocurrency so long, seeing just the plays on things and how the charts are affected by that and how that's even purposefully done, that we can still count on that this digital dollar would be behind the walls of cryptocurrency, meaning not going into what you see on Coinbase, but actually still functioning uh, in the blockchain, which we saw even on, I think that was the Mandalorian series that they just came out with, where you see several references to a chain code and that the chain code is basically determining your stance with the government, your financial stance, all of these different things. If you've committed crimes before, all this being on your, what is called the chain code. And so if you don't want to participate in that kind of thing, if that's a part of the horizon, meaning that this digital dollar and the dispensary of this uh, support like UBI that needs to come to all the people who actually don't, are, don't have a job right now, these are real things happening, not conspiracy, starting to realize that even if physical currency was flooded to everybody, there's not actually enough printed money to give everyone the stimulus check. So it would have to be like a EBT card where the money would be actually held within the government account and you would be given a card or a chain code or whatever you want to call it to access that money. And the reason for that would be is that if everyone kept going in the direction that they're going right now, as far as if I get some money, then I'm going to go buy up all of this supply. They would need to be able to regulate, well, you only can buy three rolls of toilet tissue with this. You only can buy $200 worth of groceries. You only can buy and that is, of course, how EBT or the food stamp cards are regulated even now. You cannot buy certain things with those cards. So with this in mind, it lets you see that as, as a mature um, a person that is into economics in a very mature, stable stance, you're going to see all this emerging. As we talked about before, you kind of feel like there's an allies versus access act thing going on with the banking system. Mm -hmm. And reaching out to family members, tribe members, et cetera, that are also in other countries, Europe, other places where the banking systems are different. And then beginning to start this collaborative aspect of looking at where's the best place to put money and what's the best thing to do with it. Uh, as someone mentioned here, we do have something coming. It's very dynamic. I'm not going to really talk about it now just because I want the energy really, you know, to, to stay open because it's working, it's done. And uh, we have, like I said, about one more week until we're able to introduce it. We're already building landing pages, but it does involve basically making money without doing anything as crazy as that sound. And it's trustless, meaning that you don't have to like gamble and say, mate, hope this works. You get a chance to run a simulator like you had real money in there. And then it'll show you how much money it would make, have made before you put any money into it. I think, again, that that is revolutionary, but it also lets me know that if we have it, somebody else also has it. And then it kind of gives me an awareness of how fast also, not fast like crazy, but fast not like lazy. That's a new one, not fast like crazy, but fast like not lazy. How we need to actually realize how to turn resources from cash uh, or, or yeah, resources from cash or fiat into something else, which I think it becomes, is gonna be something that's not necessarily considered when you just don't have any money. But then you can, already start dealing with a stigma that many will face once they start getting any form of current, which is like, well, let me build this up to like at least 50,000, at least 100,000, 150,000. And then I'll start thinking about buying something. And really you need to be thinking about right now where I put my mind at, to be honest, you know, and I don't want to give everyone a doomsday fear factor way of mindset, but this is how I think. What do I have that somebody would want to trade me food for? That's how I really am going at this. So it ain't going to be, you know, these kind of conversations, a beautiful spirituality. I don't think nobody's going to want to give me a sandwich for that. Maybe. But technically, no, you're going to need to have something. And so the world in its selling of skills, and we talked about this before, where skills, you can get paid for skills. You can get paid for talking. You can get paid to, to give someone an analysis. That seems to be like still in a little bit of question. We have, we have time, though. Like, so right now you see a lot of people are coming online, they're offering online services. Generally, that's some type of skill. It's very difficult for somebody to beam something physical to you on the internet. So we see that that is working, but I can foresee a time where people will want more actual value out of what it is that they're getting, something physical from someone if they're going to be able to exchange to them things that actually have value. 
And so when you start thinking about that, you return to your original essence, which is actually crops. Crops are our original value. And we're not always talking about carrots all the time. There are many cash crops, if you made that, are actually out there. And also, if you work with herbs and those kind of things. So this is where you're more of now realizing that nature is still the original banking. The companies that are, are always going to be on top and have always been very proficient at keeping their finances together have things like huge coconut farms where they're selling the holes. They're making charcoal out of that. They're making milk out of this. They're making water out of this, uh, filters out of this. And just realizing for yourself that when you start meditating on stuff like that, you come up with answers and solutions. It'll seem like a challenge at first. What can I do that somebody would actually want to give me food for? And then as you sit intelligent, you'll actually start to come up with things that, well, okay, well, yeah, I could do that. And then this will start to actually allow you to tackle some of the more smaller situations about what should you do now to diversify your financial portfolio. So that, that's what I want to give towards that because there is a lot emerging, of course, and there is some questions about the economy, but that's the full spectrum of it. And then realizing again that if you can reach out to someone internationally, maybe you got friends in China, you know, let me, let me throw something over there. I'll send it to your PayPal. Now you got some yuans over there and, you know, just really starting to get yourself familiar. Not so much as that you're going to just be a millionaire all of a sudden because you put the money in the right place all the time, but that you're getting yourself out of this stagnancy of letting someone else become responsible for how you're going to be eating and how your money is going to be flowing.